Hello and welcome back to another rheumatology.physio blog read. My name is Jack March and it is just a little bit after Christmas when I am recording this in between before we get ready for New Year's Eve. If that's the kind of thing you celebrate, I'm usually in bed by my usual time of 10 p.m. But hopefully other people have a little bit of a better social life than me, even in these COVID-19 restriction times. So hopefully you'll be having a little bit of a party or a little bit of a celebration. Or if not like me, I hope you sleep well overnight. So this blog is called Rheumatology Bloods Update. I've been meaning to update this blog for a little while, and last blog's legend Claire Paling has nudged me into it. We have the return of the now recurrent features, the legend of the blog, and all the way at the end, the musical accompaniment. In this blog, we're going to cover the blood testing for rheumatology conditions, likely results, and the profiles of the more common conditions. We go into tons of depth about the nuance of ordering bloods on my recorded and in-person courses, and you can find details of those on rheumatology.physio forward slash courses. Please do consider heading to the shop, rheumatology.physio forward slash shop, to find more resources and supporting me to continue this harebrained project. As usual, feedback is greatly appreciated and any other further reading for me, please do send it my way. And please remember, this blog is not a replacement for clinical reasoning. And if you are unsure, get advice. Legend of the blog. This week's legend is Elaine Miller. She has single-handedly changed my understanding of so many things from pelvic health to communications. Pelvic health, health is not a fringe specialism that MSK or rheumatology therapists can get away with ignoring. Please do check out her website and follow her on Twitter at, at Gussie Grips. That's G-U-S-S-I-E-G-R-I-P-S, -S, both for the website and her Twitter address. Absolutely brilliant. And she will be at Pel Pelvic Health Live with us. Uh, in a couple of months time. So on to the blog. Introduction. Blood tests are a vital component when it comes to clinical reasoning in rheumatology. Not everyone has the authorization to order bloods for their patients, but a working knowledge remains important to help you in management of suspected rheumatology patient. It's important to remember here that interpretation is nuanced, requires clinical correlation, and that formal diagnosis remains the role of the rheumatologist with this group of patients. Conditions will always remain suspected until investigation by a rheumatologist. Routine blood tests will always be carried out for suspected inflammatory arthropathies, such as rheumatoid arthritis and spondyloarthritis. These will consist of a full blood count, inflammatory markers, biochemical tests, and immunological tests. This blog will concentrate on the inflammatory markers and biochemical tests. It is by no means exhaustive and is designed to help MSK therapists to order appropriate blood tests. Again, I reiterate, if you are unsure with what to order, please seek advice. Also, just because we can order blood tests doesn't mean that we should. Inflammatory markers. These will often be raised in inflammatory arthropathies, but remember many, many other things can also increase levels of inflammatory markers in the blood, e.g. obesity, acute injury or infection. And a negative result does not rule out a suspected condition on its own. ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. This is a non-specific test of inflammation. Normal range, men 0 to 14, women 0 to 20. Note there is some variance with age, so proceed with caution when interpreting if the levels are near to the top of these ranges. Also note, with obese patients, they will also be a bit more raised. CRP, or C-reactive protein. Another non-specific test of inflammation. Normal range is less than 5, raised 5 to 15, significantly raised 15 plus. Note that this is very reactive to any activation of the immune system. Immunological tests. Immunological tests have much more utility in diagnosis and can have value with prognosis in inflammatory arthropathies. Just a reminder that these still have diagnostic limitations. Rheumatoid factor. 15 to 20 percent of rheumatoid factor positive patients have no associated conditions and it is prognostic rather than diagnostic in RA. Rheumatoid arthritis. Sensitivity 60 to 90 percent. Specificity 70 to 80 percent. Higher values prognostic of poorer outcome. Psoriatic arthritis. A negative rheumatoid factor result has diagnostic utility in psoriatic arthritis. 
as 90% of them are negative. Anticyclic citrullinated peptide, or anti-CCP. And in rheumatoid arthritis, this is highly specific. 95% plus for diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis. HLA B27. Note, present in roughly 8% of the population. However, this does vary geographically across the world. Spondyloarthritis. Men, 90% positive. Women, 85% positive. African Americans may be as low as 50% positive. Psoriatic arthritis. 40 to 50% will be positive for the HLA B27 gene. ANA, or anti-nuclear antibody. Approximately 95% positive in lupus. But again, a lot of patients will have a raised ANA and no associated condition. Next, within the visual blog, we do have the rheumatology condition profiles. So I'm just going to read out these profiles and um, hopefully they will make sense to you if you're listening to this on the podcast. I'm going to insert the image into the video. So we have a table on the, on the left hand side, we've got um, some different conditions and above, across the top, we have got uh, the different blood tests. So ESR, CRP, anti-CCP, HLA-B27, rheumatoid factor and ANA. I'm going to read out the rheumatoid arthritis and the axial spondyloarthritis um, results, and then you'll just have to look at the picture for the others. So rheumatoid arthritis, ESR is often raised, CRP often raised, anti-CCP positive, HLA-B27 negative, rheumatoid positive, sorry, rheumatoid factor positive often, and ANA positive sometimes. Axial spondyloarthritis, ESR raised, often, CRP raised, often, anti-CCP negative, HLA B27 positive, rheumatoid factor positive sometimes, ANA positive sometimes. So you get the idea on the podcast that we've also got peripheral spondyloarthritis, psoriatic arthritis, lupus, polymyalgia rheumatica, osteoarthritis and fibromyalgia. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good visual representation. End. I hope this adds some clarification to the challenging topic of rheumatology blood tests. Remember that you still need to order other investigations for differential diagnosis reasons, and this whole mixture is very complex. Please do provide some feedback so that I might grow and improve, and I'll see you out on the next blog. So finally to end, we have the music choice of the, uh, of the blog, and this week we have Paramore, All We Know, and one of the lyrics, we've tried so hard to understand but we can't. And I'm going to leave you out with a little excerpt of that, hopefully short enough that I won't get into any copyright trouble. And I'll see you on the next blog. Thank you for listening.